Hello, I'm Tally Allen. Welcome to the Wiz Conversations Immunity Reflection on the show history and moving forward. As the Muni's Director of Education, I know firsthand that learning in progress cannot happen without honest reflection. The strength of these conversations is that they were recorded in the middle of the 2020 summer and thus the raw truth and power of that moment in history are ever present. Rather than performing in the Muni's 2020 variety shows, four cast members from the Muni's 2018 production of The Wiz sought a more meaningful and appropriate way for their participation to support the momentum of social justice. In these conversations, they unpack the cultural power of The Wiz and its characters and explore their own individual journeys as people of color in the musical theater industry. I'm so grateful to Danielle, Jared, James, Darius, and Amber for collecting their voices and sharing their truths. We hope this piece will continue to serve as an educational tool and reference point, capturing the thoughts and emotions of all of us at that moment. I have one question for the both of us. It's a two-parter. Uh, I mean, for the group of us, it's a two-parter. What does an equitable theater space look like to you? And what support do you need as a Black artist as we move into this new world? We need it to look like, we need it to resemble what it looked like at the Muni in 2018, where Black women are leaders behind the table, where Black people are leaders behind and also on stage, you know, where Kofi Coleman is, is a leader behind the stage and Black folk are leaders on the stage as well. We need more of that. I wonder what Black work will look like without centering whiteness, without that dilution. I think of something like Black is King. I want to see more of that on stage, you know, uplifting us. You know, and, and I, I, I celebrate any piece of artwork that centers the culture where they can be free. Why is it so hard for Black folk to do the same thing? We need folk to get up out the way and allow these works that are done. People say that there aren't a lot of Black works that are there. They are done. They're not getting produced. They're not being allowed. So we need the door to be opened and to stay open, not for a moment, not to, to appease a certain kind of, a certain um, um, need for, for a, a trend or what's, you know, what's popular right now, but moving forward from 2020 on, we need a continuation of that. I just wonder what it, what it would look like. And I just, uh, that was so beautifully put. I'm, I'm thinking about the young kid that's five or six years old learning the kind of like un unlearning the, 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 the ceilings and the roofs, you know, that you can't do this or you can't be, you know, um, a part of that or something like that. I just unlearning, you know, those, those, those places in which th that aren't even spoken about that, um, you know, that, that, that if, it, if it's education, you know, the, which I hope this is a part of what we're doing. If it's education of like, hey, it's okay to be you. In fact, inhabit those spaces fully and freely in whatever way you can, you know, because, and, and someone's saying that. Like, I, I think so much of my experience was the implication that it wasn't okay, which is worse, you know? It's <laughs> When it's not said, it's implied or inferred. So you, in essence, imprison yourself because it's speaking in your own voice. And when people are, are in positions, you know, that, that are of color and are in positions, educating and rearing and mentoring and, 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 and helping, you know, change the culture from from the early age i think that that grows you know and it expands into lovely full human beings yeah i think um uh i love all that too and i, I think for me the thing that kind of has always spoken to me um before you know we realized that <laughs> we realized just how strong the systemic uh, uh racist uh stronghold was on theater, um, I'd always grown up just feeling like I wanted everybody to understand that creativity had no color. 
Mm. Um, and somehow, somehow I was bred into the theater and creativity was always attached to whiteness first. Um, and if the show called for black, black creativity, then a black creator was considered. So there was never any equal opportunity to create to something like creativity, which is something that we're all born with, no matter you know what we look like, no matter what our gender is. Um, and I would love for an equal opportunity to creativity. Therefore, um, you know, if, if if there's a if there's any kind of show out there, you know, why can't we explore creativity from all kinds of lighting designers, or all kinds of choreographers, or all kinds of writers? Or even all kinds of producers. So it's like I, I would love an equal opportunity to creativity uh, in the um, in the world of theater, um, just so that way, so uh, that way many different perspectives are brought to the table and are able to create change and um, and to pr progress people forward um, out of thinking there's only one way to create or there's only one kind of person that can be creative. Because um, then when we open our minds to that, when we get out of that box, then all of a sudden we, we realize that, yes, you know, there can be <laughs> all female creative teams. You know what I mean? There, there can be, you know, creative teams on, a, on a, uh, a show that has maybe nothing to do with African-American people. But you can't have a black writer on that show or you can't have a black producer on that show or you can't have a black choreographer on that show. Like it shouldn't seem so extreme to... <laughs> I cross pollinate, I guess you could say. You know what I'm saying when it comes to being creative um, in theater, and, and and to me, there's there's so many great things that can be found in. Um, I don't even want to call that experimenting because it shouldn't be experimenting. It should just be like it, it should just be. <laughs> There'd be so many great things and great perspectives um, that can be launched from um, creative platforms when they're equally you know sought after in that way in my opinion so um, I would love an equal opportunity towards creativity and a detaching of a specific color or gender to what it means to be creative in theater. I think the bottom line for me anyway is you know we're, we're all artists who love the theater who love the arts who were all drawn to it uh, by way of being inspired, by way of finding our way out of whatever situations, whatever it was. And so theater illuminates something. You know, theater has always been the illuminator. Um, and I think it is incumbent uh, upon, you know, theater creators, uh, the, the institutions of theater, you know, across the country to look at how it needs to shift. How do we shift? What are the practices that we have that uh, keep things in place where it's this imbalance? Um, and and whether it's you know everything from how you cultivate new audiences because here's the thing: audiences are going to change in these next number. I mean, they're already changing. You know, the, the whole subscription model is dying out. Um, uh, and so how, how do we um, make that anew? Um, uh, how do we educate? How do we bring young people to the, how do we, how do we continue to bring it into the communities that don't know it's for them? Because we still have so many communities that know, that don't think theater is for them. You know, that's all, you know, born of major and minor, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, practices, you know, things that have become so ingrained in the DNA of, you know, what we talk about in systemic racism, uh, institutionalized racism. And so it's 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 a big shift, but it, it it is the work, you know, because it's not just for what we want. It it has to be for what the future generations want, you know. Um, what do we leave? What is your legacy? And you know, and theater has always, like I said, it's always been the illuminator of that. So what do we truly want this legacy to be? 
How do we use the lessons of these different movements? And how do we build on it? How do we make it so that Amber Ruffin isn't such a unique thing in terms of, uh, oh, she, we had a black female writer. And, you know, and we're not a monolith. There's so many, so many aspects, so many things in the experience to build on, you know, um, for what a, a, you know, a black lighting designer, a, a, a black set builder, a, 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 you know, a choreographer, you know, what, what have you, a costume design, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's across the board, you know. I 100% agree. I also like, I, it, it, it truly makes no sense because every black person who is a professional has had to go through it. You know, I don't know anyone who is at, um, you know, a professional level who is not doing twice the work. I, I don't know them. You know what I mean? So yeah. when you hire black, you, you make so much less work for yourself. You know?